Armando Surigan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook and Armando Surigan, please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including artworks, and you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. Now in this video, we're going to look at nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, specifically the two nicotinamide adenine dinucleotides from glycolysis, the two NADHs from glycolysis, which are in the cytoplasm. And we, we want to see how these two NADHs enter the mitochondria. So essentially, we, we want to see how these two NADHs from glycolysis, which, which is currently in the cytoplasm, can enter the mitochondrial matrix. Uh, because NADH, as we know, is required for oxidative phosphorylation in complex 1, remember. So the two mechanisms uh, that can transport NADH from the cytoplasm into the mitochondria are the malate aspartate shuffle and the other one is a glycerol 3 phosphate shuffle which I did talk about in my oxidative phosphorylation video part 2 if you haven't looked at that and that looks and that looked at it in a bit more detail now let us just begin by saying that NADH plus H the nico nicotinamide adenine dinucleotides are in the cytoplasm and let's concentrate on the malate aspartate shuffle fir shuttle first and how it transports the NADHs from the cytoplasm into the mitochondrial matrix for oxidative phosphorylation. So we begin with oxaloacetate, which can be in the cytoplasm. Oxaloacetate will convert to malate with the enzyme malate dehydrogenase. And from this, NADH uh, plus H is oxidized to NAD. And so malate can now, tr can now travel through the outer mitochondrial membrane and through a uh, what's called the malate alpha keto glutarate transporter, which allows malate to go from the cytoplasm into the mitochondrial matrix. So this transporter is called the malate alpha keto glutarate transporter because it's also, this transporter can also tra uh, transport an alpha keto glutarate molecule from the inside to the outside, from the outside to the inside, like so. So here we have the alpha ketoglutarate from the mitochondrial matrix traveling to the cytoplasm. Now malate can then convert back to oxaloacetate through the same enzyme malate dehydrogenase. And from this, an NAD from the cytoplasm is reduced to NADH. So as you can see, this is how the NADH from the cytoplasm is transported in the into the matrix. Anyway, this uh, malate aspartate shuffle doesn't end there because uh, the name aspartate, we haven't talked about aspartate yet. So anyway, oxaloacetate can then convert to aspartate with the enzyme aspartate amino transfer, trans, uh, transferase. Now aspartate is an amino acid. It's a non-essential amino acid. Um, and how does it convert to it? Well, uh, another amino acid, glutamate, um, essentially donates an uh, amino group to oxaloacetate to produce aspartate and glutamate converts to alpha ketoglutarate in the process. Aspartate now has a mechanism to move from inside the matrix to the cytoplasm through the, another transporter known as a glu uh, the glutamate aspartate transporter. So aspartate can go through this transporter and go into the cytoplasm like so. Now aspartate can then convert back to oxaloacetate through the same previous enzyme aspartate amino transferase. And where uh, does the amino group go from aspartate? Well it goes to alpha ketoglutarate to produce glutamate again. And alpha ketoglutarate if you remember is part of the Krebs cycle. Now this is interesting. So now glutamate can then travel back into the cytoplasm um, through the same transporter that aspartate came from the, because it's glutamate aspartate transporter so glutamate here can go back here and so as you can see this is a, a sort of a cycle um, happening but essentially what's important about this malate aspartate sh uh, sh shuttle is this is a way that NADH from glycolysis from within the cytoplasm can travel into the mitochondria to provide the NADH for the oxidative phosphorylation process so now just to recap about the oxidative phosphorylation process, here we have complex 1, complex 2, complex 3, complex 4, and complex 5, which is ATP synthase. And NADH is used in complex 1. 
where NADH is oxidized to NAD and the electrons are obtained from it, if you remember. If you don't remember the electron transfer chain, the oxidative phosphorylation process, let's just recap it really quickly. We have two other important proteins, and these two proteins are mobile proteins, meaning they can move around. We have ubiquinin, designated Q here, which is in the inner mitochondrial membrane, and we have cytochrome C, which is on complex 3, in the intermembrane space. Now, just recapping the process really quickly, NADH uh, is oxidized to NAD through complex 1. And as NADH is oxidized, it will take the electrons from NADH and give them to ubiquinin, um, converting ubiquinin to ubiquinol. Also during this process, four hydrogen ions are being pumped from the matrix into the intermembrane space. Then ubiquinol will move and um, associate with complex 3. Ubiquinol will then give essentially its electrons to complex 3, which complex 3 will then give the electrons to cytochrome C. So now cytochrome C has the electrons from NADH. And also during this process, complex 3 will pump out four hydrogen ions. Now cytochrome C with the, with the electrons will then move to complex 4, where it will donate the electrons to oxygen, uh, creating water, essentially, making water. And also during this process, complex 4 will pump out two hydrogen ions. And all these hydrogen ions that have been pumped out from complex 1, 3, and 4 will then go through ATP synthase from the intermembrane space into the matrix to make ATP. So the NADH used initially in complex 1 were the NADHs from the Krebs cycle, from the preparatory step, and also possibly from glycolysis, which came in through the malate aspartate shuttle. However, there is another shuttle, the glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle. And this doesn't exactly uh, bring NADH from the cytoplasm into the matrix. It actually just brings it into the intermembrane space. So what happens is that there is another, there is a molecule which can go through the outer membrane of the mitochondria and float around in the intermembrane space known as dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Now dihydroxyacetone phosphate here can convert to glycerol 3-phosphate. And as it does this, it will oxidize, it will be reduced, oxidizing NADH to NAD. This is done through the enzyme cytosolic glycerol 3-phosphate uh, dehydrogenase, abbreviated CG3PD here. Now, so glycerol 3-phosphate now has the hydrogens, or the electrons, you can say. And so interestingly enough, the inner mitochondrial membrane also has the same enzyme, um, the, except it's called the mitochondrial glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. And using this enzyme, glycerol 3-phosphate can convert back to dihydroxyacetone phosphate. And instead of reducing NAD to NADH, uh, this process, this reaction will actually reduce FAD to FADH2. And it's FADH2 which provides the electrons to ubiquinin. And if it provides the electrons to ubiquinin, it will not associate with complex 1. And so the, the, um, it will not pump, the complex 1 will not pump out the four hydrogen ions that initially would have been pumped out if NADH were to go into, this, into the mitochondrial matrix. But it didn't. It's just in the intermembrane space, right? And so now this FADH2 will convert ubiquinin to ubiquinol. Ubiquinol will then give the electrons to complex 3, where complex 3 will then pass the electrons to cytochrome C. And during this process, complex 3 will pump out four hydrogen ions. Cytochrome C with the electrons will then go to complex 4 and give the electrons to, uh, to oxygen, perhaps, and converting it to water. And also during this process, complex 4 will pump out some two hydrogen ions. And so these six hydrogen ions that were pumped by one FADH2 will go through the ATP synthesis to create ATP. And remember, that was a brief overview of oxidative phosphorylation process. But what's important to know out of this whole shuttle thing is that the malate aspartate shuttle actually shuttled in uh, NADH from the cytoplasm into the mitochondrial matrix, which allowed the NADH to um, associate with complex 1. However, through the glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle, the NADH was not brought into the matrix, only into the into, into the intermembrane space where, where it was essentially converted to FADH2 and so missing complex 1 and so not pumping as much hydrogen ions. 
and so this would create less ATP if you think about it. So now just finishing off the oxidative phosphorylation process, we didn't look at complex 2. Complex 2 is known as, is known as succinate dehydrogenase, and it converts succinate from the Krebs cycle, you can say, to fumarate. And also during this process, an FAD is reduced to FADH2. And FADH2 uh, is what provides the electrons to ubiquinin, if you remember, converting it to ubiquinol. And then ubiquinol will then give the electrons to complex 3, which then complex 3 will give the electrons to cytochrome C. Also during this process, four hydrogen ions are pumped. Cytochrome C will then go to complex 4, um, and then two hydrogen ion ions are pumped. And then we have the six hydrogen ions going through ATP synthase to make ATP. And so if you can look at this diagram, we can see that if an FADH uh, gives the electrons, it will not associate with complex 1 at all. And so not much hydrogen ions are being pumped, and so not much ATP are being produced. I hope this video made sense. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much.